Welcome to Traveler's Tales. I am your host, Greg Alonzo. Today I will be your guide through history as we take a look at what is the power of the crystal skulls. Moving right along, mythology tells us one thing while archaeology tells us another. What exactly are crystal skulls? From where did they originate? What hidden powers do they have? Today we will answer these questions as we dig deeper into the tale of the crystal skulls. Let's begin by defining what is a crystal skull. These skulls are hard stone quartz carvings. This type of quartz is either clear or milky white and also referred to as rock crystal. They are claimed to be pre-Columbian Mesoamerican artifacts alleged by their finders. However, these claims have been refuted for all of the specimens made available for scientific studies. The results of these studies demonstrated that those skulls examined were manufactured in the mid-19th century or later. It was also concluded that these skulls were most likely made in Europe. During this time, interest in ancient cultures abounded. It is generally believed that the skulls appeared to have been crafted in Germany. Furthermore, the work was likely done in the town of Eider Obenstein. This area was renowned for crafting objects made from imported Brazilian quartz. Despite some claims presented in an assortment of popularizing literature, legends of crystal skulls with mythical powers do not figure in the local native cultures. The Mesoamerican or other Native American mythologies or spiritual accounts make no reference to crystal skulls with no such powers. The skulls are often claimed to exhibit paranormal phenomena by some members of the New Age movement. They are also portrayed as to having such powers in fictional works. Crystal skulls have also been a popular subject in numerous science fiction television series, novels, films, and video games. Claims of healing and supernatural powers of crystal skulls have had no support in the scientific community. No evidence of any unusual phenomena can be associated with the skulls. How then did crystal skulls arouse interest in the general public? Trade in fake pre-Columbian artifacts developed during the late 19th century. This led to the Smithsonian archaeologist William Henry Holmes to publish an article denouncing the trade in spurious activities. Although some museums had acquired skulls earlier, it was Eugene Boban, an antiquities dealer who opened his shop in Paris in 1870. Boban is most associated with the popularizing of the trade in these skulls. Many skulls were claimed to be pre-Columbian and usually attributed to the Aztec or Maya civilizations. Mesoamerican art has numerous representation of skulls, but none of the skulls in the museum collections come from documented excavations. Further examination determined that the type of crystal used to make these skulls contained chlorite inclusions. This led to the conclusion that this type of crystal is only found in Madagascar and Brazil. Thus the study concluded that the crystal of the skulls in question were unobtainable or unknown within pre-Columbian Mesoamerica. However, the belief in the paranormal power of the crystal skulls to create miracles was perpetuated by Anna Mitchell Hedges. In part two, what is the power of the crystal skulls? We will take a look at the role Anna Mitchell Hedges and her uncle Frederick Albert played in the tale of intrigue. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Traveler's Tales. Please like and comment. This really is the best way to help our channel grow. Don't forget to hit the little bell icon to be notified each time we post new videos. Until we meet again at the crossroads of folklore and fact, Cartistos.